moon days exactly the same. Everything, all the rules are the same. Do you observe the question is do you observe the new moon day exactly the same way you observe the Sabbath? Does it have the same rule? Is it the same way? Is the Sabbath and the new moon day exactly the same way? The same way you keep the Sabbath, you don't go to work, you don't cook. Is that the same rule? What are the rules that apply to the new moon day? How do you observe the new moon day? That's a good question. Um no, there are there's a difference between the Sabbath and the new moon. There's a difference between the Sabbath and the new moon. Uh, they are not the same. Uh, they are, there are three types of days. Okay, first of all, let's start from understanding the three types of days. Let's start from understanding there are three types of days. New moon day, work day, and Sabbath day. New moon day, work day, and Sabbath day. Sabbath day is you don't go to work. You don't cook. You worship, you rest. You don't go to work. You don't work in the house. You worship and you rest. You don't cook on the Sabbath day. Um, you don't travel on the Sabbath day. You can read Jubilees chapter 50 to see all the things you can do on the Sabbath day. Jubilees chapter 50. If you don't have the book of book Jubilee, you can Google it. You can Google the book of Jubilee. And you can read all the laws about keeping the Sabbath. Jubilees chapter 50, you can type in into Google. Jubilees chapter 50. And you Google it and then you read it and you see all the laws about keeping the Sabbath. But New Moon Day is different. New Moon Day is usually at the beginning of the month, of course. The last day or the first day after the last Sabbath. The first day after the last sabbath new moon day is at that time that the moon is dark the moon is 100 percent dark there's no light in the moon and then that evening the light will come into the moon that's what it says in uh, enoch chapter 77 14. enoch 77 14 again if you don't have the book of enoch you can google it type it type it into google and you can read it enoch 77 14. Enoch 77 14 tells you when the new moon day is. New moon day is that day when there's no light in the moon. All the light in the moon is gone. So the moon is dark. That's the new moon day. And then that evening, the light comes into the moon. That very first tiny light that comes in, that very first crescent of the moon, it happens on the evening of the new moon day. Then the next day, is the first work day of the week. That's the way it works. So new moon day is when the moon is 100% dark. There's no light in that new moon. And then, and then in the evening, the first tiny crescent comes into the moon. And if you are not able to see it like today, if, if on the new moon day, you couldn't see the first crescent of the moon, then that means that the next day is also a new moon day. And for sure, the second day, the second new moon day, because there's two days new moon day sometimes. There's one day new moon sometimes and there's two days new moon day sometimes. When you come up at the end of the month, when you come up at the beginning of the month on the new moon day, you will either have a one day new moon or you have a two days new moon. So when the moon is completely dark, that's a new moon day. On that day in the evening, light will come into the moon and the next day will be the first work day of the week. This is how you determine the new moon day. This is what we see, what we see with our eyes. That's also what it says in the book of Enoch that happens on the new moon day. So that book of Enoch tells you exactly what we witness with our eyes today. That's the new moon day. Some people will say that full moon is the new moon. That's nonsense. There's nowhere that scripture will tell you that full moon is the new moon. Full moon is in the, mid in the middle of the month. Full moon is in the middle of the month. Full moon is not the new moon. New moon is when the moon is completely dark. And then the first tiny crescent, which is new, comes into the moon. That is the beginning of the month. That's new moon day. Full moon is not the new moon. I have to clarify that. So in a new moon day, which is the day after the last Sabbath of the month, we can look at the scripture to see what they did. So in that way, we can understand what you do on the new moon day, how to observe the new moon day. 
we can look at uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12, you see that on the new moon day, they went for worship. They went to worship the Most High on the new moon day. So they went for worship and they worshiped the Most High until midday. That's Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12, they went to worship the Most High and they worship until till midday. That worship was on, from until midday. That's how long they worship the Most High. And they were worshiping and they read from the book of the law. They read from the book of the law. That was what they were doing on the new moon day. They read from the book of the law and the people were being taught the law. They learned from the law. Please read Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 8. I'm sorry, chapter 8 verse 1 to 12. If you, if you have time, read the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 12. And you see what they did there. That, on the new moon day, they worshipped. They worshipped on the new moon day. And what they did is that they were there to worship Yah from morning until midday. And they read from the book of the law. And then after that, after that, they went home. So that's one of the first places you see uh, how they worshipped, what they did on the new moon day. They gathered together and they worshipped the Most High on the new moon day. And also in Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 to 3. Ezekiel chapter 46, the Most High told us to open up the worship center, to open up his house on the Sabbath day and on the new moon day. That's Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 to 3. Ezekiel 46, verse 1 to 3, we're told to open up the worship place on the new moon day so that the people of the land can come and worship. Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 to 3. And then in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 12, 1 to 12, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12, you see that the people of the land went and they worshipped uh, in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. So, and then after they finished worshipping, um, which was from morning until midday, the Levites told them to go home to eat their food, to eat their food and to basically rejoice that that day was a holy day. They were told to rem remember those who are less privileged, to remember those who are hungry, to share their food with those who are hungry on that new moon day. So they went home. That's what we see in, in, in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. We also see, we also see uh, in um, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20, we saw that Saul and Jonathan, they sat down to eat the new moon feast because you eat as you saw in nehemiah chapter 8 they went home and they ate they were told to go home and eat and remember those who are less privileged in first samuel chapter 20 we see that the israelite uh, saul and jonathan and david was supposed to be there they ate on the new moon day and then what happens is that in the evening like it says in psalm 81 verse 3 psalm 81 verse 3 in the evening of the new moon you Go out and you look for the moon. You know, so it says in Psalm 81 verse 3, Blow the trumpet on the new moon. Blow the trumpet on the new moon. Psalm 81 verse 3. Psalm 81 verse 3. So what we do is that we, in the morning of the new moon, we wake up, we shower, we put on our clothes, we go to the house of Yah, we worship Yah. After worshiping Yah, we go back home and then we eat. We eat and we celebrate and eat and thank the Most High. And then in the evening of the, moon, evening of the, of the new moon, in the evening, we go outside and look towards the west. We look towards the west because the moon is dark in the day of the new moon. The moon is dark, just like it says in the book of Enoch. Then in the evening, when you go out in that evening of the new moon, you look towards the west. Typically, you look as soon as the sun goes down, you cannot see the moon. You can't see that first crescent, that first sliver of the moon. You cannot see it when the sun is up. So typically, when the sun goes down around 6 p.m. or something like that in your area, 
when this whenever the sun goes down that's when you want to look so you'll be outside and you're looking towards the west towards the west as soon as the sun goes down after maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes the sun goes down just keep looking up looking up looking up go out on time and look up towards the west you should be able to see the first crescent of the moon if you see it that evening that means that means you have one day new moon day that means that you have one day new moon day then the next day you go to your walk you walk for six days and then you rest on the seventh day and keep your sabbath you walk six days you rest on the seventh day you walk six days and you rest on the seventh day but in the evening of the new moon if you are not able to see the moon that evening like this evening today is a new moon day if you go out in the west and you look towards the west and you're not able to see the moon you had a clear sky the sky is clear there was no cloud coverage towards the west the sun goes down and you're not able to see the moon that means that you're going to have a two days new moon day that means that the next day will also be a new moon day the second day the next day will be a new moon day this is exactly what happened in the book of samuel first samuel chapter chapter 20 first samuel chapter 20 you see that they had a two days new moon day they sat down and ate twice so if you're not able to see the first crescent of the moon in the evening of the new moon just like it says in the book of enoch 77 14 in some book of enoch some book you see this in chapter 78 so the same thing you see in chapter 77 in some book of enoch some translations you will see this in chapter 78 so when you see that let that not surprise you so i'm just saying this just in case if you go and look in the book of enoch in chapter 77 verse 4 if you are not able to see this information flip to the next chapter because some translation do put it in chapter 78 so when you look in enoch chapter 77 verse 14 enoch 77 14 and you're not able to see this flip to the next chapter chapter 77 chapter 78 you should be able to see this information and it tells you what happens on the new moon day so on the new moon day in the evening if you go out the moon is supposed to be dark on that day if you go out in the evening and you look towards the west and you're not able to see the first crescent of the moon the very first tiny crescent the first sliver of the moon if you don't see it on the new moon day that means that the next day is also a new moon day that means you have two days new moon day just like they had in the book of first samuel chapter 20. that was a two days new moon day that they had there two days new moon day so the second day which is the 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 a new moon day also because you're not able to see the first crescent of the moon the day before that second day for sure guaranteed that second new moon day in the evening you will surely see the moon because at that point the moon is the moon is at this point big enough for you to see it like tonight we're not going to see the moon because it's too tiny i looked on the app you can download the lunar app you can go use your phone and go to if you're using iphone you go to app store if you're using um android you go to android store uh, uh to the play store google play store and you can look for these apps on you or, or, or they, they have some apps that you can download the lunar apps just type in lunar app and you can download an app that will tell you what the moon is doing and then you can see what the moon looks like in real time i i don't advise you to rely on that app that app is simply to show you what the moon is doing sometimes they are not accurate i have to warn you sometimes they are not very accurate uh in terms of you can't rely on it to keep the sabbath you cannot rely but that app those apps will help you to be able to have an idea of what the moon is doing so i recommend downloading them and just looking at, using it to find out what the moon is doing that's all but don't rely on them too much you still have to go out on the evening of the new moon to see if the moon came out if the moon comes out in the evening of the new moon then that means that seven days from that day will be the next the next sabbath the new moon begins the month 
seven days from the new moon. So let's say today is Monday and today is a new moon day. That means that seven days from today will be the, the first Sabbath of the month. And the moon will be half, 50% full on seven days from the new moon day. Seven days from the new moon day, the moon will look 50% full. That is your Sabbath right there. That's how you determine your Sabbath. Seven days from that, the moon will look 100% full. That's your seventh, second Sabbath of the month. You have a full moon on the second Sabbath of the month, on the 15th. Seven days after that, you have the, the third Sabbath of the month. The moon will look uh, 50 The moon will look uh, 50 percent full again. Seven days after that, the moon will look tiny, very tiny moon. That will be the last Sabbath of the month. So if today is a new moon day and today is Monday, that means that the next four Mondays will be the Sabbath. If today is a new moon day and today is Monday, that means that the next four Mondays will be the Sabbath. If today is a new moon day and today is Tuesday, that means that the next four, next four Tuesdays will be the Sabbath, the real Sabbath. And seven days from today, the moon will be 50% full, half moon. Seven days after that, the moon will look 100% full, full moon. Seven days after that, the moon will look 50% full, the last quarter. Seven days after that, the moon will look uh, very tiny, last crescent of the moon. The day after that is automatically a new moon day. And then you wake up in the morning, you go and worship the Most High, you shower, you put on your clothes, you go to the house of Yah, you worship Yah. If you don't have a house of Yah to go to, you can stay in your house and observe it yourself. If you have a congregation, you can join them. If you have people online that you worship with, you can join them online. If you have nobody to worship with, you stay in your house. No going out on that day. You stay in your house on that day and worship the Most High. So you do that in the morning time like we see in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse uh, 1 to 12. You, st you do that in your house. You, you worship here from morning till noon. Then you go, you, you eat your food. You eat your food if you can. You remember those who are less privileged and help them you eat your food and then in the evening you go out and look for the uh, first crescent of the of the moon when the sun goes down in the evening as the sun is going down you go out and make sure you have no trees you have nothing that will block your view no tall buildings or trees that will block your view from looking down towards the west if you have a good a good a good clear sky there is no cloud coverage you look towards the west you, sh you should be able to see the moon in the evening of the, la of the new moon day. If you see the moon, that means that the next day you go on to work. That's your first work day of the week. The next day after the new moon day is your first work day of the week. You go on and you go for your business and you go to your work or to wherever you have to go on that day after the new moon day. If you have cloud coverage and you're not able to see the moon on the new moon day, for whatever reason... It was raining or there was cloud coverage on the new moon day that's fine all praises to our heavenly father for technology because you can go to places like the truth of yahweh you can google new moon report uh, and go to look online look on the internet new moon report look for website where people do report that they saw the moon or not there's a couple of good websites one of them is the truth of yahweh you can simply go to google you go to Google and you type in New Moon Report. If you Google New Moon Report, I think it's the first or the second link that says Truth of Yahweh. New Moon Report, Truth of Yahweh. Is, the, 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 the website is from a, a group known as Truth of Yahweh. You click on that, they should be able to tell you if they, because they get reports from different parts of the world. People report to them if they saw the moon or not. On the New Moon Day, on, the, on that same day that you're looking for the moon, this, this particular website gets reports from different parts of the world when pe people are reporting to them if they saw the moon or not. So if you are not able to see the moon on the new moon day, because you have to be able to see the first crescent of the moon, you cannot rely on the app or website. You have to be able to go out and see for yourself. But if you're not able to see because it was raining or you had cloud coverage, then you can go to a place like Truth of Yahweh. And look and see if they got if they got report that people saw the moon. If 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 you if this if you are able you know if people saw the moon 
That means that the next day is it's your first work day of the week. The next day is the first work day of the week and you go on to your business and you go to your work. If you're not able to see the moon on the evening of the new moon day, that means that the next day is also a new moon day. Then you have to worship again, eat your food, relax, help the needy. And then in the evening, you go out and you look for the, the first crescent of the moon. The second day of the month, I, almost, I guarantee you for sure, on the second day of the month, you will definitely see the first crescent of the moon because at that point the moon is now big enough uh, for you to be able to see this is how it works so we have to do this we have to observe the new moon day because the most high said so we have to observe it and even in isaiah chapter 66 isaiah chapter 66 it says that uh that as the new heaven Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. That as the new heaven and the new earth that he will create will last, that from one new moon to the next, to one Sabbath to the next, that all flesh will come and worship before him. From one new moon to the next and one Sabbath to the next, as the new heaven and the new earth that he will create will last. So, even in the kingdom, we are going to be acknowledging the new moon day. We're going to be worshipping the Most High on the new moon day. That's a fact. According to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23. Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. So, uh, it's, it's something that we have to do right now because our Heavenly Father told us to. So, on the new moon day, that's how you observe the new moon day. And I had to do this this way to use scriptures to answer you this, uh, this question and to show you in scriptures the things that they did. First, you have Ezekiel chapter six, uh, 46. Ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3, where the Most High said that the, the, the worship center, the sanctuary, his house should be open on the Sabbath days and on the new moon days. And the people of the land are supposed to come and worship on the new moon day. That's Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 to 3. Then we have Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12, where you see the people of the land coming to worship the Most High on the new moon day. They were there from morning until noon, and they worshiped the Most High and they read from the book of the law. And then they were told by the Levite to go home and eat their feast, go home and eat their food, but to also remember those who are less privileged, who may not have food to eat. And then in the evening, you go out. We also have uh, 1 Samuel chapter 20 that shows this with uh, David and Saul and, uh, uh, and Jonathan. They had a two days new moon days in that case. Because according to 1 Samuel chapter 20, they sat down to eat and Saul did not say, any, say anything when he saw that David's seat was open. Saul did not say anything. But on the second new moon day, on the second day of the month, like the first new moon day is the first day of the month. The second new moon day is the second day of the month. So Saul did not say anything on the first new moon day. On the second new moon day, he realized that David was, David was not there also. So that was when he began to ask his son, where is David, the son of Jesse? And Jonathan told him, you know, so that's what you see there in that scripture. And also, I cannot forget um, Colossians chapter 6, chapter 2.16. Colossians 2.16. We see that Paul, the apostle, please read from verse 1. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 16. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 16. If you read Colossians chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 16, you see that in verse 8, Paul was warning the people of Colossia, the brethren in Colossia, Paul was warning them to not let anybody condemn you, judge you for observing the Sabbath days, the feast days, and the new moon days. But today, Christians have taken that place and they have twisted it and telling you, look, look over here. Paul was telling them to not let anybody condemn you for not observing those days oh my goodness that's not true look at verse 8 look at verse 8 verse 8 gives you idea of what paul was talking about so paul was telling them the brethren the, the believers paul was telling them 
do not let anybody use the philosophies of this world the philosophies of this world to condemn you to judge you don't let anybody stop you stop you from observing those days don't let anybody judge you for doing that or condemn you because we have to observe those days and paul observed those days you see in the book of acts how he said i'm going to go back to jerusalem to go observe uh, the upcoming feast that's what paul says in the book of acts this is very clear so paul himself was observing these days there's no way he can tell you oh i'm not going to observe those days or, or don't let anybody judge you uh for not observing those days that is the opposite of what paul said that is the opposite and it's disgusting that these wicked people will twist his word and turn it upside down so that is not that is not what paul was saying so um these are scriptures that shows that it's very clear that we are to observe the new moon day and it also gives us information on how to observe the new moon day we were told how to observe it and how to observe these things so if you go to acts of apostle i want to show you paul the apostle that he observed these feast days look at acts of acts of apostle chapter 18 acts chapter 18 here is the words of paul i'm going to read something that paul said about the feast days so how can he be observing it and then he tell people not to observe it? That's absolute nonsense. Christianity is one of the... No, sorry. Uh, let, me, let me say that right. Sorry, I said one of the. It's not one of the. It's not one of the. Christianity is the worst pagan religion in the history of mankind because they take the scripture and they twist it. So where Paul tells you to do something, they will say, oh, he said we shouldn't do it. Where the Messiah says to do something, they will twist it and turn it upside down. Christianity is the worst pagan religion in the history of mankind. And if you are a Christian and you are in Christianity, you are a fool. You need to get out. Get out now while you still can. So back to Colossians chapter, chapter 2. That's what, when Paul was telling them in Colossians chapter 2 about observing, don't let anybody condemn you for observing the feast days, the Sabbath days and the new moon days. He was encouraging them. Read from, read from verse 1. Colossians chapter, chapter 2 from verse 1 to 16. Colossians 2 verse 1 to 16. Paul was encouraging the believers, the followers of Yah, Yah's law, to make sure that nobody condemns you. Because at that point, people, are, people were beginning to fall away and beginning to claim that we don't have to do those things. So this is how you observe uh, the new moon day. New moon day don't go to work how can you go to work on the new moon day when you're told to go and worship how is that possible it's part of the law that you have to go worship ezekiel 46 1 to 3 ezekiel 46 1 to 3 say that the house of yah has to be opened on the sabbath day and on the new moon day and the people of the land has to come in and worship on that day nehemiah chapter 8 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, 1 to 12 says that you are supposed to. You see, you see that people of the land came and they worshipped on the new moon day. They worshipped, they went home and they ate. Before you know it, it's evening. You have to go back, go out and look for the moon. If you see the moon, then the next day is the first work day of the week. You walk for six days, you rest on the seventh day. You observe your Sabbath. The next day, you go back to work. You work for six days, you rest on the seventh day. This is so simple, very basic. So if you are to follow the scriptures, you see that you can't just wake up on the new moon day and get ready and go to work. You're not observing the new moon day if you do that. You wake up, you worship here, and you, you go and you worship here. If you have nobody to worship with, worship by yourself. Stay home. You cannot wake up on a new moon day and go to work. We are told to worship on that day. That's scripture. So that's how you observe the new moon day. Can you do stuff around the house? Yeah, after worship. Because you have to cook the food that you eat. You cannot cook on the Sabbath day, but you can cook on the new moon day. 
You cannot cook on the Sabbath day, but you can cook on the new moon day. You're not allowed to light fire on the, on the Sabbath day. Like turning off on your stove. On the, new, on the Sabbath day. You can't do that. That's Exodus 35 verse 3. Exodus 35 verse 3. You can't cook on the, on the Sabbath day. You can cook on the new moon day. If you want to cook, that's fine. You want to clean your house and do stuff on the new... After you worship though. After you worship. If you choose that you want to keep you, clean your house or... <clears throat> put your, fr your, your fringes in your clothes, that's fine. The Sabbath is a lot more stricter than the new moon day. Because you can't cook on the Sabbath. You can't light fire. You can't go to work. There's so many. Like, it's more restricted. It's a rest day. You worship on the Sabbath and you rest. Study your scriptures. Rest. New moon day is a little bit, you know, different. You still have to worship on the new moon day. And you can't be going to work when you're supposed to be at worshiping. After worship, you go home and you rest. You wait. You eat your food. And then in the evening, you go out and look for the moon. If you want to do stuff around the house while you're waiting for evening, that's fine. That's up to you. There's no law that says you shouldn't do that. What the law says, what the word of the earth say, what of the Most High said is that you have to worship on that day. So if you do it properly, there may not even be a room for you to go to work on that day. And you shouldn't go. So that's how you observe the new moon day. That's how you observe it. It's it's not it really, you know, and if you do have your own your own business, you don't have to work for anybody. This is not a big deal. So new moon day is a feast day. Get your food. New moon day is a holiday too. It's a holiday. And uh, we have to acknowledge it. Worship, rest, wait for the moon to come out in the evening. So all praises to our Heavenly Father. Come back and uh, I want to make sure you understand what I just explained. Do you understand what I just explained? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I understand, but, um, uh, so, uh, now I'm asking since you say you can cook, so I'm assuming you can go to the store and buy groceries that day after you worship or stuff like that or no. Can you do what? Like, you're allowed to, after you worship, you're allowed to, like, go to the store, buy groceries or anything like that, or you ain't allowed to buy nothing. Well, you should get all the stuff you need ahead of time. You should get it all ahead of time because you, you should you should get those things before because if you go and worship and then get off, have to go buy groceries, when are you going to cook the food in order to eat it? So that day may actually end up being a stressful day for you. So you should get those things ahead of time. Now we do have a scripture that says that the people of people that were selling stuff in the land of Israel, the people that sell their, their sell things, they bring in their crops, their corn, and sell to the Israelites and, and stuff like that. They were saying, when is the Sabbath day going to be over and the new moon day that we may sell our, our corn? That's what they were saying. When, when is the Sabbath day going to be over? And the new moon day, that we may sell our product. What does that tell you? Nobody was buying their stuff. Because when you, and that's why I told you, like, well, that's why I'm saying that if you have to go to the grocery store to go buy your things, then you're not organized. Because you have to get the things you need before that day. And have it all ready. Even if you're going to cook it, you have to get it ready before that day. So, we have a situation where people were saying, when will the Sabbath day be over? And the new moon day, that we may sell our corn and sell things. The reason why they were able to say that is because nobody was buying. There was nobody buying, their, buying their, what they were selling. 
so they had to make that statement and ask when will the new moon day be over and the sabbath day that we may sell those things because that day on a on a or, or in a normal circumstances in a normal circumstances everywhere will be shut down it's like today i'm with you today by the time i i'm done here i go and eat in the evening we're supposed to go out and look so when the new moon day is observed the right way you wouldn't see anybody on the street like when you look at how the hidden observe their uh, their July 4th and their Christmas or whatever. On that day, you almost like it's it's dead outside. You're not going to see anybody on the street on that day. So when we observe it properly, when we observe it properly, we wouldn't be outside. So I don't see a situation where you have to go buy something on that day. But we also have the scripture that show us that people were not selling. Those that were selling stuff, they were not selling. And they had to say, when will the new moon day be up, that we may sell our, our things. They were saying that because the people of Jerusalem was not buying their crops or buying the stuff that they were selling on that day. They were not buying it. That's why these people had to make that statement and say, when will the new moon day be over or the Sabbath day that we may sell our sell our corn and sell so that you can clearly see that the israel was not buying their things uh buying stuff on that day but if you follow the system that we've seen in the scripture i went through scriptures i went through ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 12 if you follow it that routine if you follow it that way and observe it in that manner you will see that it will really not be possible to really, um, it will not be possible. You wouldn't even have time to be able to go out on that day. You're not going to be able to have time if you follow it in that manner and observe it in you know in in that way. You will not be able to uh, be able to to go out. So if you look at uh, Amos chapter eight. Uh, Amos chapter 8 from verse 1, thou said Yahweh, oh, thou Yahweh showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then Yahweh said unto me, the end is, is come upon my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. Verse uh, 3, Amos 8, 3. And, this, and the songs, of the temple shall be howling in that day, said Yahweh Elohim. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Verse 4. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land fall. Verse 5. Saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the effort small and the shackle great and falsifying balances by the seed. So these people that were selling stuff, they, were, they are asking, as you can see in Amos chapter 8 verse 5, they were, and the Most High is not describing good people here. These are people who are corrupt, who are oppressing people, who are, you know, doing things that the Most High did not like. So they ask a question. Yah said that they are asking, when will the new moon when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the sabbath that we may set forth effort so that means that nobody was buying their stuff on that day nobody was buying what they were selling and they themselves understood that they couldn't sell on that day they understood this that's why they are making this statement so you can clearly see Amos chapter 8 verse 5 you can clearly see it that Amos 8 verse 5 shows you that people weren't selling on that day and people weren't buying. Those who do sell, those that sell are saying, when will the new moon be over that we may sell corn? And the reason why they asked that is also because nobody was buying. 
So even those who are selling are asking, when is this day going to be over already so we can sell corn? So on, on that day, we don't buy on that. We don't, um, we don't sell. We don't buy on that day if we want to follow the scripture. That's why you have to get the things that you need ahead of time. You get the things that you need ahead of time and make sure that you have everything that you need so that you wouldn't have to go out and have to buy it on that day. And that's really the best thing to do. Get all the food you need, get everything you need, whatever you want to cook on the new moon day. And it's a wonderful day. It's a day of feast. It's a feast day that we eat and enjoy and just relax after we finish our worship. Our worship. So uh, that's what we do. So if you, it doesn't mean that there may not be a case. Sometimes one thing will lead to another. The day before the, the Sabbath, the day before the Sabbath, something may happen and you may not have it. You may not have time to go get everything you need. That can happen. That something like that can happen. That the day before the Sabbath, you may not have time to go gather and get everything you need. That's a there's a possibility that something like that may happen. So I'm not saying that it cannot happen. Sometimes you plan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then you had everything all planned out. And then on, on, the, um, on the new moon day, or the, the day before the last Sabbath of the month, something may happen and will throw off all your plans. So here you are planning that you go get everything you need for the Sabbath and for the new moon and something may happen and you may not be able, by the time you may finish taking care of that thing, it may be too late. So in that circumstances, that can happen. But, you know, one of the things that are good now, kind of good, not really good, but the fact that you can still go to some place and buy things at night, you can use that opportunity and get the things that you need. So you can prepare the things that you need for the Sabbath and eat them. Then on the new moon day, after, your, after worship, you can then prepare your food because it's a feast day. It's a feast day. It's a time that we eat, you know, sit, eat, and just celebrate. And, you know, it's a feast day. So that's what we see in the scriptures. If it's done right, you wouldn't have to go buy anything. Like today, I don't have to go buy anything because I pretty much have everything I need. I make sure I have water, have food, have everything that I need. And if you don't have it on the new moon day, you can cook it on the new moon day. But according to the scripture we see in Amos chapter 8, verse 5, you can clearly see that those who are selling something in the land of Israel, they were not selling on that day. And they themselves were asking, oh, when is the new moon going to be over that we may sell our corn? So they are definitely not selling on the new moon day and people of the land was definitely not buying. It's best to get the things you need before that day. Going to work on the new moon day, if you keep it properly, you wouldn't go to work on the new moon day. If you keep it properly, you wouldn't have to go buy, but get the things that you need. Just get the things that you need and make sure you have them. So that's what we see here uh, when it comes to the new moon. Uh, I pray and hope that you will follow these laws and the commandment and follow them uh, according to the scriptures. The answer I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you according to the scripture. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can do this or you can't do this without being able to show you so you can see for yourself. So if you doubt or you have concern about buying something on the new moon day, we have Amos chapter 8 verse 5. Uh, are you going to go to work on the new moon day? We have the scripture that say you have to worship on that day. And the people of the land worship. And after that, you eat your feast. So that's a day of rest, basically. So all praises to our Heavenly Father. Do you understand what I explained? Yes, sir. Okay, so do you still have question about that? Is there something that you still... Uh, Do you still, I mean, do you still have question, any question concerning this? Uh, no, it's okay. I just got to plan better next time. Three days straight, so yeah. Yeah. 
okay yeah it's best to plan that's why i try i try to help i try to send out the notification if you have the coming kingdom app i send the notification uh in that notification i let you know i think about maybe four or five days ago i sent in the notification to to let you know that the new moon day is going to be today uh i i did that ahead of time and then the day before the sabbath i sent out another notif notification letting you know that the next day is going to be the sabbath so you can get everything that you need i always advise that you get food for two days get the things you need for two days uh the good thing is that as soon as as long as you have what you need you can cook them you can cook them on the new moon you know so that's a good thing uh that's a feast day if we observe if we are doing this correctly uh if we are in a situation that we're supposed to be in on a new moon day it's a you know it's a it's a day of it's a feast day so i can invite you if i invite you and you come there's going to be drinks there's going to be drinks there's going to be food it's a feast day we eat and we drink and then we wait until the evening if we see the moon then we go back home and sleep and wake up in the morning and go back to work. That's the way it works. So all praises to our Heavenly Father. Uh, for those that still have questions about this, uh, you are still more than welcome to. You can contact me. You can ask. And I will try my best to go through the scripture and show you the answers according to the scriptures. I give you all the glory and all the honor. And I really wish and pray and encourage you to observe these laws to keep these laws, to observe the new moon days, to observe the Sabbath days. The Sabbath day comes seven days after the new moon day. So when your God told you to observe the Sabbath on the new uh, to observe the Sabbath on the seventh day, when he says to observe the Sabbath on the seventh day, that, that is seven days from the new moon day. The Sabbath is seven days from the new moon day. You observe your first Sabbath. The moon will look 50% full. Seven days from the new moon. You observe your Sabbath you then the next day you go to work and you work for six days seven days after that the moon will look 100 percent full on a full moon you observe your sabbath the next day you go to work and you work for six days you observe your second your third sabbath it's very simple very very simple and if you have any question about that you're more than welcome to to ask so there's very little information out there about the new moon day most people don't observe the new moon day most people don't they only talk about the sabbath day but they keep the sabbath day on saturday they keep the sabbath day on saturday and on sunday that's not the sabbath day the sabbath day is based on the moon the new moon day begins the month the new moon day begins the month seven days from that is the, is the sabbath day you observe your sabbath the moon will be 50 percent full indicating to you so this is very simple and very basic and uh, I thank our Heavenly Father for giving us the opportunity to go back into all this and do it the way He wanted it to be done. I thank our Heavenly Father and I pray and hope that everyone will go back and begin to observe this the way that the Most High wanted to, wants us to observe them. And if you do have any question about it, you're more than welcome to contact me. Uh, thank our Heavenly Father for everything and thank you, brother, for asking the question. All praises to our Heavenly Father. Thank you.